Hey guys, Graham from Four Wheeling in New South Wales. Just doing a bit of a project in the uh, in the trailer that we take camping with us. Just a quick thing I want to say is not this is not to take away from anyone like tradies, carpenters, etc. that would be able to do this sort of work, but I'm going to have a go at it myself. A couple of reasons: a satisfaction of doing it yourself, and b I don't really have spare cash to pay someone to do it. And see, I'll give most things a crack and you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then not the end of the world. So what I'm doing is in the back of the tub here, when we've got all our camping gear in here, we normally have the fridge just sitting here in the side, uh, which plugs in to that Anderson plug. But the problem is when the tray's down, when you've got the tub tray down, my wife being not super tall, uh, she's <laughs> little bit vertically challenged it's hard to get into the fridge so you've got to keep sort of sliding and dragging the fridge on the metal dragging it out and then clunking it back in I just don't think it's real good for the compressor and the internals of the fridge if you're bouncing them around all the time and they should really be fixed down tight and secure so what I'm doing I'm gonna put some ply across the wheel arches so from the top of the wheel arch across to that wheel arch with one or two supports underneath just to help keep the weight up and then we can pack our camping gear on the top. We've got roughly two to 300 mil of space underneath the shelf. So I can slide the flat drifter fire pit under there, our little fold up coffee table that we often use when we go camping, plastic tubs, Kmart, reject shop, places like that sell all those plastic storage tubs, which you can put all your oddments in. So like your torches, you know, just bits and pieces. So instead of going the full drawer system like I'd love a set of drifter drawers or one of those sort of drawer setups but it's all extra weight that already this trailer's for 400 kilos empty so by the time you load all your camp gear in I just don't want to be towing a huge amount of weight around behind the uh, little Suzuki it does pull it no problem but yeah just the lighter the better and the other thing too is with camp gear I've found that if you make camping really easy you're going to want to do it more nothing worse than pulling up to camp and rummaging around through everything trying to find bits and pieces you know it's just annoying so the easier it is the more you're going to want to use it the more you're going to want to camp and everyone enjoys it so i grabbed a, a sheet of uh, form ply from my work yesterday saturday rv it up and i'm going to basically cut it out now the issue i've got we ripped the sheet down at work yesterday it's 1500 wide from side to side and from the front to the very back of the tub drawer is 1400, but I had to cut it a little bit shorter. The issue that you have is once the canopy lids on and because obviously it sticks out a little bit there and you've got this section here, I can't actually get the piece of ply in. Even if I put it on an angle, it's too hard to get in and work. So I'm gonna to have to undo the canopy bolts. Um, it's only sort of four holding it on. And then once we get the tray in, uh, the uh, the platform in i'll know where my legs and all are and it'll give us room to double stack because you shouldn't really be putting a lot of heavy stuff on the top of your fridge either because it stuffs the seals if you keep packing heavy stuff up on the fridge so it'll give me that extra height from the top of the fridge up that's wasted space it'll give us that room underneath so we'll be able to slide all the bits and pieces in there and, and uh yeah we'll get into it cheers guys okay so this is the timber i'm going to use guys it's 17 mil form ply it's what concrete is used to form up concrete work it's got this special coating on it and it's a little bit smoother than normal ply so obviously when you're sliding things around on it it's going to be a bit easy to get things in and out of the tray now normal ply versus marine ply i'll put links below if you haven't seen that video check it out because a lot of people think you have to have marine ply if you're going to use it in you know external so to speak where it's undercover indoors normal ply will last just as long as marine and it's a lot cheaper uh, that sheets i think about 50 or 60 bucks roughly at sort of retail price now the only issue i've got i definitely will have to take the canopy off which is a bugger this sheet is 1500 uh, which is the width from that upright to the one on the other side now the issue i have is corner to corner even if i go in on an angle corner to corner i've only got an opening of as you can see 1470 so it's about 30 mil shy of fitting in there so yeah, i'm definitely gonna have to take this bloody canopy off so i'll rip in it i'll get the four bolts out lift it up with my feet it's only got to come up literally 30 mil but there's just no other way of cramming it in there i grabbed a bit of timber from work as well which yeah, it's a bit of 70 by 35 um so it fits it's actually the right width to sit down in there so i'm going to cut it off i'll cut it off into sections the height that I need to go from the floor up and then I can stand those up. I'll probably only need maybe in the guts of it here. I'll probably do maybe, well, one of the fellows at work said that I could probably get away with just one in the middle, but if I'm gonna do it, I'd rather maybe put an extra couple under there. So the span from the side to the center 
is only about 700, so I won't get a lot of sag in it there and I won't get much there because it's not a lot of heavy stuff in there. But I'll probably do maybe one, two, or even one, two, three uprights just to sort of stiffen it up. I might even put one between them on the on the bottom like that as well. So anyway, I'll have a play around, see how I go, but I'll rip this canopy off. Cheers, guys. I must admit that's one thing these carry boy canopies are really good. This one I picked up on Facebook. A fellow was selling it and had to have it out of his unit by the end of the week. He listed it for about 300 bucks originally. He said if you can pick it up by Friday or on the weekend, 50 bucks it's yours. A couple of little things with it, like the handle lock thing was broken and a couple of the seals are a bit dicey, but for 50 bucks, what I do like about them is they're quite an easy fitting system. You don't have to drill through the original metal and everything. They use this clamp style, so a couple of bolts and yeah, quite quick and easy if you do have to remove it. So This trailer, I will actually do a separate video once this whole corona thing's out of the way and we can get back out. I'll, um, sorry about the noise. I'll drag it out to somewhere and um, do a bit of a rundown on it. I've had a few people asking me about it and um, yeah, we set it up quite cost effectively. So I'll go through it anyway and show you guys what's in it and what we've done and all that. Yeah, this whole thing should just lift up, lift up and off, with a bit of luck. Okay guys, day two, Sunday, I've just got home from work and we are unsuccessful lifting this off last night. We, as you'll see in the footage, we lifted the lid off, put a section of timber across not even thinking though, once the timber was there, it was in the way of getting the ply in on an angle. So I'm gonna try lifting it off now. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough leg length to get it up and onto the steel box to hold it there so that I can get the ply in. I'll give it a try. If that doesn't work, the only other thing I thought I might be able to do is get the stuff out of the garage that was in the trailer, put the trailer back in, I've got some timber supports going across as a shelf. So I might be able to put a ratchet strap over a couple of those beams hook it on the uh, roof racks that are on the trailer and just ratchet it up. It's only got to lift up that far just so I can get the trailer out, do the ply and then I can just wheel the trailer and drop it back. So I'm going to try lifting it now anyway on my own and see if I can get it up high enough to get up onto the steel box. As you can see there it's probably, well it's about 10 inches above the tray so if I can get it up high enough onto there I'll do it. Otherwise I'll put it back in the garage, it's just a bugger because everything that was in the trailer I've put in on the floor. <laughs> Means I've got to pull all that out onto the driveway, put the trailer in, uh, just still my head in. So anyway, I'm gonna rip into it. Uh, I'll see how I go and uh, go from there. Cheers. Yeah, no, that's no good. I can't, um, I'm not going to be able to lift it high enough to get it up on that box and the box is only 700 deep and the canopy's 1400 and I was just thinking as I was doing it if I get the canopy far enough forward then I may not be able to have enough in it to lift it to lift it back on. So I'll just have to do it this way, I'm going to have to empty everything out of the garage, I'll roll it back in, strap it to the beams and do it that way. Alright, see how we go this time, cheers. Okay guys, so what I ended up doing, used a couple of ratchet straps that we use obviously for tying our camping stuff down. I've got a, got a whole box of them here. So I've grabbed two out and as you can see, so what I've done, I've put a strap over the top of this beam, hooked it onto itself and then a ratchet strap around the roof rack. Same on that side. I've lifted the whole thing up so it's, it's literally just hovering above the tray now. So I'm going to pull the trailer out and hopefully the whole lot will come off relatively simple and it won't bash around too much. And then all I've got to do to get it back on is push the trailer back into the same sort of position roughly, lower it down and then I can pull it out and fix it up. So, we'll see how we go. Moment of truth. Catching on something. Ah, oh, shit, the wiring, damn it. All right, there's always something. I forgot there's wiring going through the canopy down over the side here to the uh, switch box inside the, inside the box here. 
So what I'm going to have to do for this to work, I'm, I'll just snip this wire and then obviously I'll have to solder it and put a bit of heat shrink back on because yeah, that wire is too hard to pull out of the box. It's all soldered into my control panel and that goes up into the roof light. So I better snip that off now with some side cutters and we'll worry about it after. Yeah, you can see there, it's basically a thin twin core that goes inside that box from underneath. So. There's the other half of it now, so we'll sort that out after. But otherwise, the, the canopy's totally off the trailer now, so I tell you, if I ever buy another house, I'm getting a double garage. There's a bolt there that I don't want scratching up the trailer. Bingo, she's off. Bit of a worry. So, makeshift block and tackle, canopy's off. I'll get this bit of ply in as quick as I can so that that's not hanging up there too long. I'll back the trailer back in and with a bit of guidance from my wife or daughter, I'll be able to get that back up onto the rails of the tub slide it in far enough, lower that back down, wheel it back out, bolt it all down and Bob's your uncle. So cheers guys, gonna get into the ply. All right, so here's the tub out without the canopy. So now I've got plenty of room that I can work on it. Hopefully I don't run out of light this afternoon because it'll be a get away. I'll be able to get the ply in from the side now, work out what height supports I need and uh, get into it. Got to trim it down because this back section here bulges out past there as well so whether i have it short at the front or back really is much of a much yeah i'll notch these out as i said at the start guys i'm by no means a a tradie or a uh, even a good home handyman but I'll give it a shot so trim that down a little bit further and make it fit and uh, go from there. Okay guys, so it's definitely not quite the tolerances that I'd like on the sides. I would have liked it a bit further over, but as I said at the start, I'm not a carpenter. If I don't get it done today, it won't get done. So, it's just a shame those tub arches didn't sit flatter, but that'll be okay. I'll get some supports in, one down the gut, maybe one either side, and um, see how we go. countersink the head of the screws a little bit too so that if you're dragging stuff backwards and forwards it's not catching on there. Now that should, there we go. So once we've got the weight of everything back in there, that'll sit down nice and snug. It's probably a mil, probably a mil on it. That's good. Might put one more in there, either side. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna repeat this further down there. Probably put one maybe in the center and one at the front just to be safe. Maybe one on the sides here just to keep it upright. So, all right, see how we go. I'm thinking what I might do is just put this, I've cut a piece of the 7035 and I'm gonna put it down the guts there and I'll screw into the end here, the end that end, and that just sort of will um, brace it up a little bit. So that should do me. I'll keep an eye on it if it ends up being where it's not working, I can always pull it back out and I'll put a piece from on top of this beam up underneath the ply. So yeah, it's just getting later and later in the day. And uh, as I said, if I don't get it finished now, so I'll screw that on and um, then I can start on the top here. Cause the idea is that another piece of ply goes on there as the fridge slider, so. All right guys, so as you can see outside, she's pretty dark now. She yeah, it's just hit six. So obviously power tools on a Sunday night, I'll have to stop now. Pretty much done anyway. If I do too much more and rush it, I'll end up just buggering it up. So I've, uh, push the trailer back in as you can see the lights working in here but so yeah hopefully next weekend I can get it all finished off I'll bolt down the aluminium L angle and I'll mount the actual timber support for the fridge in 
bolt all that up. I've got some 600 slides, fridge slide, and I'll bolt all that in, get the fridge on. I'll get a couple of those eyelet, I'd probably say, for tying the fridge down. I'll just get a couple of cam buckles from work if I don't already have some. So that way the fridge is secure when you're off-road. So yeah, all next weekend, it'll be done. I'll get the fridge slide in, put the runners on, and basically bolt the canopy back down, and uh, job done. So I'll show you the finished bit at the end anyway. Cheers, guys. Day two, we've got all the timber work in. Now all I'm doing is setting up the slider drawers. So what I ended up doing, I went to a metal place near my work. I know you can buy this sort of stuff at the big green chain of hardwares, but I'm not real keen on them. I won't go into it here, but I try not to buy anything from uh, that company if I can. And they're actually dearer anyway. I ended up picking up two sections of this 40 by 40. It's 1.6 mil, so it's actually thicker than the stuff at the hardware and it was cheaper as well so I ended up picking up two one meter lengths of that and then I've got two smaller 20 by 20 by 1.6 mil which will go onto here to hold the timber up so I got the four lengths for 30 bucks so that was actually cheaper than the big chain of hardwares which is fantastic a couple of fridge sliders now these are a 600 mil long which I can buy in through my work and it's a push to open so basically comes out 600 mil just noticed I I've drilled the holes in the back of the aluminium to line up with the holes that are in the slider. So you can see there, I'm gonna put extra in just to try and stiffen it all up. Now I've made the mistake of pop riveted through from this side, and now that's sitting up a tiny bit too high, so it's actually catching on there. So what I'm gonna to have to do is drill that out, and I'll pop rivet it from this side, because obviously that is a lot flatter than that. The problem is you don't realise until you put it through how far out it's, it's going to stick. So, damn. All right, I'll drill that out and pop rivet from this side. So, anyway, I'll do that and I'll show you. Okay, so I've drilled that back out and we'll go from the other side now. But yeah, you can see that'll come out 600, which I couldn't do a minute ago. So that whole section there, hopefully I'm going to mount this angle. So that angle will sit down on here, one on each side another piece of ply on top, and then the whole lot should slide out to almost where the tray is here. So I'll pop rivet that through from the other side and um, see how we go. But yeah, we just had to drill that bit out. Okay, so we'll rivet this through. Now I've never really done a lot with rivets over the years, because uh, I don't do a lot of metal fabrication, but ideal rivet always is whatever section that is there, you want that to be, you can see there, you want it to be about as thick as the steel. So it pulls through and then domes the top over. And the, so that length can't be too long. And obviously the diameter should be the same size as your hole. So they're 4.8 mil diameter with a 3.2 mil grip. The grip being that section from the top to there. I've bought specifically a 4.8 mil drill bit as well instead of just trying to use something smaller or bigger. So that'll fit down through there. And I'm gonna do them all the way along. So let's have a go and see how we go. This time we'll pop it through from this side. So rivet just goes in the front of the gun. The gun's got different sized uh, nozzles, if you like. They just screw out, and then you can put the other ones in if you need bigger or smaller shaft size, being that, that long section. So that'll go down into there like so. That will go down through the hole, and then with a couple of squeezes. This is an old rivet gun too, so it's, it's not the best. And there we go. So it snaps the sat section off, leaving the top domed and the back sticking through. So hopefully that, yeah, that's better. That'll cover it now. So whereas it wouldn't wouldn't slide out before because it was hitting as I showed you. So nice neat rivet there. A little bit on the back doesn't matter because you're not going to see it anyway. All right, we'll do that for the rest of them, and we should be right to boulder all up shortly. Really sturdy on there now, eh? Yeah, so basically there's your slide there. So out 600, back in, push to lock, and then I'll obviously just trim this aluminium down because I was working off a metre, but it's way too long. So I'll trim that off with the angle grinder anyway, but I wanted to fix it on first, so it's a bit easier to, to work with. Now to get this bit out, all you do, because obviously you can't get the gun into certain holes, you flip that over, there's a little plastic latch there, and you pull that, and then that section comes out, so which is good for when you're fixing that onto the other bit, which I'll show you shortly. Well, that one's a bugger. I don't know. That bit, that sort of knobby section, 
if that's on the inside here, nothing's going to catch anyway. There's a gap there, but I just can't get the gun in there. So we'll do that one from behind. We'll take that back out. So the other thing I'm going to have to do now, some of these holes that were I've drilled to line up with the slider, they're not the right diameter in the slider for the rivets I've got. So those holes are slightly smaller. That one's not, but obviously that one is. So. I'll just have to drill that slightly bigger, that's, and then these will be right to go through. Little tip, guys, when you're doing any metal work, all that swarf stuff's really sharp on the edges, so if you leave that on the driveway and your wife comes out with bare feet on to take the bin out, she loves it. <laughs> Son of a gun. Okay, so back to the same issue. So I've done it from the back because it's too hard to get down into through there. And now that's gonna keep hitting the slider. There's bugger all in it, eh? You can see there, I don't know if you can actually pull this bit out as well. Okay, so this bit we're doing now, this is the aluminium, which will go onto the face of the runner, like so obviously cut to length as well. But that'll go onto the face. Same thing, I'll drill and rivet onto here. And then there'll be one of these either side of the fridge, and then the ply will sit across in there. And that's what the fridge will sit on. So let's do this one. probably want to go the flats, well ideally the flat this side, but depending on how far they go through. Well, the only way we'll know is if we try one. It's not hitting, that's alright. So, we'll do them all that way I think. No way it's neat from the inside and it's not going to catch on the ply then. That one in the centre is a little bit misaligned, so we might just re-drill him. Right, so there's one side done, guys. I will cut that off with the grinder, and we'll start on the other side. So we're just going to copy the other one now, just a mirror image. So we'll rivet this one down and we'll be a go. The back two went... We are on fire! All the rest are from inside. Correct one, so that will slide back into there. There we go. How bloody easy is that? So now, there we go, we've got one on that side as well. All right. Okay, now what I've got to do is trim this angle off and this angle off, drill some holes in there, drill some holes through the ply where, the, where these are going to sit, down on here, like so, so work out exactly where they're going to go. That side and obviously this one here. So that'll sit like that. And that bad boy will go in there, like so. One on that side, like so. And then the ply will sit across. And I've got a couple of eyelets for the timber as well to tie the fridge down front and back. So we'll get into it. We're up to this stage now. So I've fixed the angle onto the ply on both sides and screwed it up from underneath so there's no screw heads. Now all I have to do is down in here, drill some holes through the angle and then through the ply and drop a bolt down through there with a nut on the bottom and then put the eyelet bolts front and back for tie downs but all right so now i've just got to try and work out the exact spacings for the bolt holes but 
355. I'm not a carpenter by any means, but I'm giving it a go. I'm surprised she's turned out as good as it has. So yes, yeah, I'll drill this one. I was thinking maybe five bolts to keep it sturdy, five in each side. I'll drill that and then come across and do the same down that side, bolt it in and hopefully it's all fairly straight. It's the only way I think you can really do it otherwise. Alrighty, let's get into it. Alright guys, I'm pretty pretty um, happy actually the way this has finished up. As I said, I'm no tradesman by, by any means, but I'll, uh, I'll give anything a go. Just spin the camera around so you can see we've now got the extra room underneath. I might get a couple of plastic storage tubs maybe and just daisy chain them together with a little bit of rope from one to the next with knots inside them so that as you pull the first tub out it takes the slack up in the rope and then pulls the back tub out because obviously being being that that's 1400 from the back to the front of the tub that that's way too deep to try and lean down in there to grab stuff out so if I put a plastic storage tub if I can get a full length, otherwise I'll just get two and uh, as I said, daisy link them together with a little bit of uh, guy rope. Um, but yeah, so there's the, tr there's the uh, fridge slide in. So it's just a push to open, pull it out. I'll just have to clean the bearings up a little bit because they've got a bit of sawdust and swarth in them. So they're not, I mean, they're still rolling as easy as, as easy as they probably should, but it's just a bit gritty because of that sawdust. So I'll clean them up, but there you go. So there's the slide. And then I grabbed four of these. Yeah, so one either side at the front, one either side at the back, and then uh, they'll be the tie downs just to keep the fridge from bouncing around while we're hitting the tracks and stuff, because you don't want your fridge shaking about. And then basically I've got your Anderson plug there, which the fridge can either, the cord can either go down through the side and just come up under here where you don't see it, or I might even put a few little cable ties along there just so it's cable tied in and nice and firm. Still got our 12 volt plug there, which I use for the strip lighting that's on the top of the canopy lid. So, yeah, it's come up all right. I'm really, really happy with the way it's turned out, actually. So I've just got a few more bits to do. Friendly reminder guys to always be safe. I was being lazy earlier and holding a bit of metal and wanted to drill the hole bigger. And the drill got caught in my shirt, my good four wheeling shirt, available on the merchandise page. And he ripped some, <laughs> ripped some holes in it. I'll have to get on my four wheeling in NewSouthWales.com and uh, order myself a new shirt, I think. That was my bloody good one too. So always be careful when you're using power tools, guys. Here's a good little tip too guys with your drill bits if you're not sure of the size. They've all got it stamped into the bottom of the shaft but over time from going in and out of your chuck all the time and all that sort of torque, the size tends to wear off. So grab a bit of scrap timber, get a drill bit you think's about the right size. Just do a quick straight down plunge hole into the timber, scrap bit. And then with your bolt, you can test the size. So straight up I know that bit is eight mil because that's an eight by 8 by 25 mil so that goes straight down into there like that so I know it's the right size so now I can do the same drill bit on the slider so yeah little tip there what I've done here I've grabbed some 5 16th or 8 mil washers they class them as a mud guard or mud flap washer because they've got the, the wider section across there to a normal washer. I'm using these because it helps spread the load out a little bit better. So once we pop the eyelet up, so I'll put one underneath, one on top, just to help spread the load. Now what this is guys, this is just a threaded, threaded eyelet uh, with a female thread right through it, 8mm. 
You can also get them with a male thread so it hangs down, but I couldn't get any long enough to go through this ply. This is 17 mil, and most of them are only short, maybe 10 to 15 maximum, so you're not gonna get a nut on there. So I've gone the female thread, and that'll basically go straight on there like so, with just enough thread in it for the nut, uh, the uh, for the bolt underneath to catch on. And then it's just a matter of getting the screwdriver, just tightening that up. By putting the screwdriver through, that holds it tight on top and stops it twisting. Go that way so you can see. And then it's just a matter of tightening the nut up underneath because obviously as you tighten it, that's going to twist. So you go in like that, keep it straight. Now you don't want to over tighten it because being ply it does try and squash it down a bit. But by having the by having the mudguard washer on the top and the bottom, it helps spread the load out across the timber all directions and stops it trying to split. Whereas without that, all the pressure's just on that smaller diameter section of the eyelet. So that's nice and tight. We'll do one on the other side and then we can do the two back. How gets that? Now, okay, two, two at the back. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be exact, but try and keep it a bit uniform. Now, we don't want to go through there, so we've got to be careful. the washer. Alrighty guys, done and dusted. Whew. Okay, I'll pop that back in. I'll grab some straps, throw the fridge in and see what she looks like, eh? I've left a bit of room around it, which they say essentially you should do anyway because you want it to keep cool. But yeah, at least it gives you a bit of room at the front so I can always you know, use that space. If I, if I wanted to, I could use that, I could use the space at the front, you know, to put some little spice jars or something on. So I'll grab a couple of straps. A couple of these little, these little short buggers would be the go. I get these from work really cheap, so I've got a heap of them. We'll go around the handle, like so. And the good thing with strapping it down, as I say, if you hit any really bumpy tracks or big potholes, or you happen to be bouncing around on a, on a track somewhere, it just helps keep your fridge secure it's not bouncing around as well because your compressor and everything they are quite robust but at the end of the day they're still you know small electronic sort of uh, equipment so you don't want them hammering around either and then that'll just simply pull tight what these bloody bremic straps are nice and strong Please. Obviously, I've left a space down the front here because we usually put our, our pop-up gazebo. I'll have to do a uh, rundown on the on the trailer and what's in it and what we take camping, but I'll wait until the corona thing's gone. Um, while I've got the canopy off too, I've just put a bit of rubber on these two sides. 
I had that across the front when I first installed the canopy, but nothing on the sides here and you get a bit of dust in there and it was rubbing on the top of the metal, which I wasn't keen on. So yeah, just grabbed a strip of that. But yeah, back to there. Our gazebo normally fits the exact width across here. And then obviously we've got the under storage. We've got the top storage now. The fridge, obviously I can still get into it because I'm quite, I'm quite tall. My wife might struggle a little bit, but I can certainly get in there, no problem. And then when we do pull up camp, drop that down. Drum roll, please. How cool is that? I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm so wrapped with the way that's turned out. I know some haters might, uh, <laughs> might give their two bobs worth. Feel free to comment below. I've got no issue with uh, constructive criticism. Any suggestions to make it better, go for it. But yeah, for someone who uh, sells timber for a living, not installing it, pretty stoked with that. I'm gonna make these two uprights a little bit longer. The front one's sitting maybe half an inch above the tray because it's a slight unevenness because of where the timber sits at the front there on the guard. So I'll lengthen that a little bit and I might even put some sort of little L bracket just mainly on the front one just to sort of keep the front from popping up because if the fridge is full and there's nothing else in there, obviously I don't want it tipping back, especially if we've parked, you know, a little bit on a lean. I'll put two straps on the front there and she's right to go. I'm super happy with that. So yeah. All right guys, so there we go. We've got the slide in, done and dusted, all up. Do a quick count up, but 20 bucks for the pair of sliders, 30 bucks all up for the aluminium, both the 40 by 40 and the 20 by 20, both in 1.6 mil, and roughly 10 odd dollars for the bolts and nut. These things I think were two bucks each. From memory so you know you're looking at 20 50 58 and some bolts about 68 70 bucks all up so for well under 100 bucks you got a fridge slide custom made gives you the satisfaction that you've, you've done it yourself look the fridge slides you can buy commercially they are they are really good Dunn and watson i think it is you know waco do some msa do them arb do them but you know they're all expensive they start at a couple of hundred bucks and go up some are up around the six to seven hundred for the big fridges so look if you can do it yourself i said a bit of satisfaction that you've done it yourself and um yeah i'm i'm stoked so that'll certainly make our camping that bit easier and i said we've got extra storage underneath now what i will do is put either an l bracket underneath underneath that shelf up the front into the wall or something above it just to stop it the front lifting i don't really want to drill into the into the floor there any holes in there but i might put something down the front there just some sort of bracket to stop that tipping if we are on a flat campsite or slightly inclined at the front of the trailer i just don't want it where you pull this uh, fridge back and the front of that board's you know lifting up once we unpack everything else it'll just be the fridge weight at this corner so we'll see how we go with that i'll work something out anyway but um so that's it guys two day job Spent most of the day out here, you know, not to rush it. I don't want to bugger it up, but very straightforward, very easy little modification. You could do that in the back of your ute, uh, in the back of your wagon, etc. So have a go, have a crack at it yourself, really easy. And uh, yeah, about it. Just want to say thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate the support on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. I'd really love to get the subscribers up to that thousand mark sometime this year. We're up around 740 as I record this. So if we can hit a thousand, be fantastic I've got a little sort of prize pack there that I'm going to give away when we do hit the thousand mark there'll be a random subscriber so thanks again guys make sure you hit subscribe down in the bottom and give the video a like if you don't like it double tap the thumbs down and uh, yeah keep watching we've got heaps coming some more cooking videos once this corona does disappear this whole lockdown and isolation I'm going to do a day trip somewhere I'll probably do the Balbone Gap Trail again and I might even do that as a little bit of a tag along tour if a few people want to go so hopefully in the next couple of months we can get back out on the tracks because I'm really missing it big time so thanks again guys make sure you check out our website too fourwheelinginnewsouthwales.com there is a merchandise tab there for t-shirts and stickers all funds raised through the site go directly back to the channel I'm still saving up for that elusive drone so every bit helps we're getting there and stay safe guys feel free to comment below i do read and reply to all comments and uh yeah keep watching guys remember our motto is always stress less camp more cheers guys catch you later